welcome. This is Melissa Arma with the Stock Swoosh. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. I am doing a market review because I like to do these on the weekends when the market's closed and my brain is 100% relaxed. So let's take a look at the market. I'm going to look at the SPY today. And the reasons I'm going to look at the SPY is because that overall, just if you look here back the last six months, Yeah, let's look at the SPY. The SPY, the last six months of the SPY has had a harder drop down than the Q, Q, Qs. So that's why I want to look at this. Now, take into consideration, the SPY made brand new all-time highs in 2015. The Q, Q, Qs did not. So you got to take all of that into consideration. Also, the SPY retested the anomaly day twice. Hell, the Qs did not. So. Yeah, this is the right chart to really focus on right now to see where we're going with it. So I've been watching this, watching this, watching this since the beginning of the year. The year opened here January 4th. We gapped down. We gapped down, fell, retraced ourselves into the close of the day, gapped out the following day, couldn't hold it, gapped down. Ever since this day of the gap down, actually, this is this is the number here. Oh, my Lanta. I've been saying 198, and there it is. Yep. Ay, ay, ay. I can't make this stuff up if I tried. Anyways, what we need to do is, and luckily I don't have to make it up because it's right there on the chart and I just know what to look for. What we need to do is get over this number. Over this number, 198. It's, it's Again, remember, support and resistance are areas, but the resistance now that's going to take us back up where we need to go, that people are going to start believing and getting conviction in the market again is 198. And of course, 200 will help, but once we hit up over 198, we should just go right to the $200 number. We will still be under the 200 pair moving average of the daily chart of the SPY. Does that matter? No. Why? The market is still in an uptrend. I'm the only one probably that's calling it that way, but the fact is we are. And so we will eventually, if all things stay the way that they are, get over this number. Now, what makes me say that we will do this sooner rather than later? Given the drop down in the last month, Many, many people probably don't believe me, but I'm telling you, this activity that's happened in the last week in the market, this was, yeah, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, was bullish. I know it seems like it's not, but it actually was more bullish than bearish. So if I have to read the trading action of the last week, it's telling me bullish. Why? Because we had a gap down here that failed to go lower on Monday the 8th. We gapped up then the following day. Actually, the day that we actually did this here into the close on Monday, we rallied hard into the close. Held. Held. Okay. Could have broken and fallen off a planet that day. Didn't do it. Now, this day here, we got down, but we rallied big. Rallied big. Couldn't get over 187. But then the following day, we did open rally that day. Couldn't have, we didn't have the follow through, but we did have a big, big rally on this day in the intraday. Then we fell. This was Wednesday. There were some people talking made the market fall into the afternoon. Following day, we fell again, gap down, follow through from the previous day of the Wednesday into the Thursday, but we didn't go anywhere again. Do you see this? We went nowhere. Fell, dropped, broke, rallied again, held. Held the anomaly day, held the area, held the support. So buying at every point of the way is coming in when it needs to. When it needs to, the buying's coming in and the selling is not following through. This is not what I would consider panicky action. Institutional selling, I don't see it. It's not happening. There's no follow through. This is actually bullish. Uh, a sell off in here, a gap down here, then a gap up here. Now the right we had into Friday is bullish action. So this is bullish to me. Even though we don't have some massive green body bar day, and even though we've fallen since the beginning of the year, this is a reversal of this drop down. We should see some follow through here. But we got to get over 198. And that's, you know, not crazy far from here, but it's, you know, we got to rally. We got to rally and continue and rally and keep going. So we should have the rally into the rest of the month of February, but we'll have to see where we gap on Friday. Remember, Monday's a holiday. The market's closed. It's President's Day. Tuesday, we open. We'll have to see what happens. I think that actually would be good for the market because whatever happens overseas will not affect us then, which sometimes happens Sunday into Monday. We won't have that because Monday will trade in other countries normal. So we rallied a lot on Friday after we gapped up 
we fell, and then we rallied. And I knew that we would support ourselves on Friday. So, and we did it. I mean, you could have bought the market Friday, and it was a gap up, was valid buy. So, all in all, it, it what what I would like to to uh, what I'm interested to see, what I'm very curious to see, and I guess I'm going to find out, is can we get over 198 and 200 before the end of February? That that's what I would like to see happen. In an ideal world, the market recovers without a shot of a doubt. trades over and above and beyond and through this area by the end of the month. That's two weeks. That's more than more than enough time. That's plenty of time. That's a lot of time. Some people will still read that market as bearish and will shorten into that area. Reading is resistance, but it, it, it really isn't. You could, you could say it's a temporary resistance, but I'm not even looking at that like that. I'm just looking at it as an area that the market needs to move above and beyond. And if we do that before the end of the month, it's, it's good. It's good for the spring to have a very bullish spring and and then we should make a new high still if it here this is what i'm predicting if we can do this if we can I, I don't know if we can if we will if we can if we can get up to this area and over this area and up to this area by the end of february march and april could be you know nice follow-through months for the market to make new highs whether they happen in march or whether it happens in april i have no idea but one thing's for sure whenever it happens it is going to be swift and furious that the market will blow over the numbers. Every blow number I had has been lowered because I never thought we'd drop off this much. So the blow number really is 215. 215, 210, 210, 210, which is not even the previous high. 210 is really a, a new blow number. So we get over 210, we should blow over the high of around 215-ish and continue up to 220, 225, which were some targets that people had in the market last year that we never got to, just ran out of time, ran out of year, and then we opened the market down and we've been falling all year, but not really. Remember, I like to short, I'm very good at shorting. What does that mean? It means I'm good at spotting weakness. As a result of me focusing so much on shorting, I've learned to read strength very well as uh, too. So the benefit of getting good at one thing is you often get good at the other thing too. So I'm good at reading weakness, and as a result of that, I've gotten good at reading strength too. This is showing strength here in the market, okay? And this is not weakness. So you've got to look at it, read what the institutions are doing, make sure that everything lines up. Reading trends in the market or stocks has nothing to do with lower lows and lower highs and higher lows and high, higher highs. If it was that easy to make decisions about trading trends, we no one would ever lose any money, actually. I'd just write a program and sell it and we'd all make money, but then nobody would really make any real money <laughs> because there wouldn't be any money to be had. So at the end of the day, how do I do it? Gaps. I have a method, a strategy. It's a 26-point rating system and golden gaps. I'm doing a live webinar Tuesday night. If you'd like to come at 5.30 Eastern time in the next golden gap class, it's February 20th and 21st. This is an amazing call I've made for the market to still make a new brand new all-time high and still do it really at the beginning of this calendar year. I'm not talking late in the year. I'm talking still beginning of the calendar year could do it, even after the fact that we dropped off into the first part of the year. And But I'm telling you, we didn't go anywhere. And I knew the anomaly day would hold and we did. We held. And every time we go down there and hold, I say, oh, my Lanta. And, and then when I see this here, this action, and specifically the action from the Thursday and the Friday, I say, whoop, whoop, this is actually bullish. Email me at melissa at the socksswish.com if you'd like more information. And I will do probably a lot of market videos in the next two weeks because I really want to see what happens. But I'm telling you, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised if when we get to some of these numbers I'm talking about, 198, 200, and really 210 is the big, 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 big number, we can have like almost a straight up action here. Let me just see if I can even find anything like I'm like I see it. I see it in my mind. I just want to see if there's anything that I can even find to show you like what I see is going to happen when I say the blow number. Let me just see if there's anything even anything. No, nope, can't even say this cuz it's not blowish enough. It's a rally. It's not what I mean. Let me just there may be nothing, there may be nothing like what I'm seeing is going to happen, which is, which is amazing. Let me just see if there's anything like I'm seeing in my mind is going to happen. <clears throat> no. Too tight. Too tight, too tight, too tight, too normal. Ooh. 
Well, this is the closest thing. Now, this is this isn't a great example, but this is the closest thing that I can find right now. I'm gonna. I'll keep looking. This is the closest thing that I can find right now. It's not a good example though. I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep looking. I'll be. I'll look in the room this week. But this is the closest thing that I can find right now to something what I'm thinking. It's gonna happen when we blow. It'll be like, shh, like almost straight up. Cause this happened in a matter of like really a little bit like more than a week, and this had a jimungus move. One forty one seventy five. Oh, that isn't even Jibungus. No, this isn't even really what this isn't even really what I'm talking about. This is the closest thing I can find right now. I'll, I'll have to find what I mean. But in my mind, if I drew it, and often I and often I see things before they happen, and that's that's what I'm seeing. And I and I saw it. I saw it even before this thing happened here this year. I saw it last year and the previous year, and we played out and we did it. But I didn't. I couldn't predict this would happen here. Does it matter? No, because we're still holding the uptrend. But it's like in my mind, I see how it's gonna do it. I just can't, I can't find anything actually in the last few years that even is what I'm seeing is gonna happen. And that's very interesting. It's very interesting now. I'm gonna keep going back and looking to see if I can find something in the last 10 years. But if I can't find anything that's like what I see, it's, that's gonna be unbelievable that I'm predicting it because I think it's gonna be, I think what, what I saw previously, like a year and a half ago, and then carry through into this year again, no one believes me anymore. No one believes me anymore because a lot of people think the market's bearish and it's, it's absolutely, absolutely not. But I'm telling you that everything I'm seeing that's gonna happen, the, the predictions that I'm making are all based on gaps, okay? So that's how I'm able to make the predictions. But in my mind, I'm seeing this setting up to be a, a time when the market is going to, it's going to go in a big way that's, that people are going to be surprised. That's the best way that I can say it like to a regular person, where people are going to be shocked, surprised. And then the confidence that people lost in the market is going to be reinvigorated. People will feel better again then about investing and trading. And, and, and when they get their statements in the mail every month for their 401ks or mutual funds, they'll feel happy, they'll feel excited, and people then will spend money with ease and banks will be happy and everyone will be happy. There's there's a time coming up in, in the market, and I do believe it begins in 2016, where people then feel exhilaration again about their investments and excitement about investing and trading. It's when is that really gonna start to play out? Not till after we see a very significant rally, okay? Which is more than over the high. It's gonna be a, a, a rally that lasts, and it could last for years, and I did predict that a year and a half ago, we rallied in 2015, made brand new all-time highs, but it lacked the follow-through then into the summer of 2015. It We couldn't make a new high then at the end of the year, although we rallied. Some stocks did make a new high. Market didn't. Got tired. And then this year, early in the year, we just, we just couldn't do it to ourselves. We just had some situations here, but it's nothing that's like a problem. And, I, and I've been double triple checking myself every single day to make sure. I mean, every day the market gaps down or gaps up, I read it. You could, you could rate the market every day, actually, if you knew my system to do that. But I'm focusing on it, I'm seeing it, and it's real. So we'll see what happens, but look for a time of optimism that's gonna happen. And I believe it begins in 2016, and then I believe it lasts for several years. And so this is opportunity. Opportunity in the market, if you know how to read it, to, to invest in stocks and the market long term. You gotta have guts to do it though, because it hasn't happened yet. But you gotta have guts to train, to make a lot of money and to make predictions. I mean, the, the Amazon trade and the Google trade that I took, the options that I was in, that I was up a lot of money in and had huge profits in prior to the earnings were gutsy, gutsy calls and, 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 and gutsy ones. But every day I take gutsy trades in the market because I day trade in the one minute chart. So, you just got to know what to look for. You just have to be very focused and have a strategy. If you believe in the strategy, you know what you're doing, you can take the risk. And I do. So have a great Valentine's Day, everyone. We'll be watching the market. Email me at melissa.thestockswish.com if you'd like to sign up for the next Golden Gap course. Can't wait to see what the market does in the month of February. Have a great day, everyone.